What's up music makers, it's Luke from Sojourner Tracks and today I wanna to talk about how you can group your tracks together for the purposes of editing them as a single unit. Now in this video here, I talked about how you can use an aux track to group your tracks for the purposes of processing them in the same way, um, for using the same plugins, your EQ and compression. If that's what you're looking for, check this video out here. What I'm talking about today is how you can make your audio editing decisions the same way on multiple tracks at the same time. But before I do that, I wanna just encourage you, if you like today's content, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, not only does that help me out and help the channel grow, but it also tells YouTube that you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it. Also, if you wouldn't mind heading on over to SojournerTracks.com, you can check out the newly designed website. Hopefully it's a little easier to navigate. You can get some free downloads there as well as links to all of my other material that I've uh, produced for people who are creating music in Logic Pro. Without further ado, let's check it out. So the reason that you would want to edit multiple tracks in the same way is most likely that you have multiple mics on the same source. So for example, right here, I've got an acoustic guitar that has two different microphones capturing the same performance. The same would apply to a drum kit where you've got, you know, eight, 12, however many mics capturing one performance. Anything that you do, especially in the time spectrum. So if you're going to do any time editing, any adjustments of the hits, or um, you know, if you're going to be copying and pasting or doing anything like that, if you start editing one track without the others, you're going to end up in a world of hurt because things are going to be out of time. There's going to be flamming, probably phase issues. So if you've got multiple mics on a single source, you definitely want to do your editing across all of those tracks in exactly the same way. And so the way that you do that is, I've got this track selected here, I'm gonna hold shift, and I can grab another track or however many tracks I that are gonna be in this group. And then you'll see over here on the left is this group tab. If you haven't created any groups, which I'm assuming you haven't because you're watching this video, you can select group one new. And now this group um, menu pulls up, it says two members. So I've got two tracks in here. We can name this acoustic. And now I have these options as far as what I want this group to control. So if you're gonna be doing editing, if you're gonna be getting into flex time or anything like that, uh, you want to have this editing box checked. So that's going to allow you to do all of the same editing moves across multiple tracks. And that's pretty much it. But as you can see, this goes on a little bit further. So we can make automation moves um, to the whole group. We can do volume moves across the group, as well as mute, pan, solo, all of these other things. So if I, you know, want to drag down the volume across one track, you know, it's now the same. So, or if I want to pull it up, it's going to do the same thing to both tracks, which can be really handy. And also, uh, if I want to do some different things with the fades, you can see that's happening to both tracks at the same time. But where this really gets important, um, and you got to make sure that you have this editing box checked, that's the main thing. If I pull up flex time here, so let's do polyphonic. You can see that this is happening across both tracks at the same time. So it's happening to the tracks as a group, which means, um, so I've got polyphonic flex time pulled up here and polyphonic flex time pulled up here. You can see that both, whenever I switch between, between tracks, it's actually selecting all of it. You know, it's selecting all of the audio regions in both tracks at once which is really super useful and very important if you're gonna be doing flex time. So I could put a flex time marker up in this track and let's say I wanna move this uh, a little bit closer to the beat. It's gonna do the exact same thing to the track on the bottom and that is gonna keep them together. It's gonna to keep them in the spot that they need to be to avoid really weird 
uh, uh, stuff happening to your audio tracks that are going to make you want to tear your hair out. So hopefully that solves the problem that you came here for. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comments below. If I missed anything, also leave that in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.